What's up, everybody? Happy Wednesday. Hope all you're having a wonderful day today. Um, first and foremost, congratulations to Mr. Ryan Pavey, who played uh, Nathan on this show. Uh, he signed a pretty good deal, a multi-picture deal with Hallmark. Um, good for him. Congratulations. I love the Hallmark channel. I'm not even going to lie. I love it. They got some feel-good movies up there, and that's what I watch it for. Um, and that's a good look, you know, to be signing such a big deal with such a major, you know, network and stuff like that. That's pretty dope. Um, so getting into this damn episode of GH, this was a hot mess. This whole episode was a mess. Just delusional people running all around in this episode. <laughs> just talking, just talking all types of delusions. I mean, some of them need to be checked into, you know, Shady Brook. It, woo. If they could just hear themselves when they talk, I'm like, the hell are y'all thinking? Um, Elizabeth in this, this seance, I can understand why she lied to Finn about staying at Windermere. I can understand why she did that um, and not telling him about the seance and all that stuff. Because remember, Finn was a non-believer. Finn does not believe in the spiritual world. He don't believe in none of that mess. He don't. He's a non-believer. Um, so I can understand why Liz didn't include him in it because, you know what, he don't believe it. So he probably would have been making little jokes about it because, <laughs> I mean, I believe in it, but I still would have been cracking jokes, even though I do believe in that world. But I still would have been joking, um, especially when Chelsea came up in there. I'm like, Chelsea, what you about to do? Um, so apparently there's some dark presence in Elizabeth's house, like, but Liz didn't think it it, it was Franco, because she was like, Franco would have wanted her to be happy, because apparently this dark presence is not happy about the, the family being built in that house, like the new family unit. My guess is her relationship with Finn, basically. Um, it, it's, we, what y'all gonna do to get this, to get this mess out of the house? Like, get a priest in there? Bless the home, do something. I just think I I don't know what to make of this. <laughs> I'm just at a loss for words with this storyline. <laughs> because a part of me keep thinking that it couldn't be a ghost. That's what I'm that my initial thought was this had to be Elizabeth or somebody doing this. Like Liz could have been doing this to herself. Cause her facial expression sometimes was like a giveaway that she knew something or she, you know. I don't know. It was just weird. Her facial expression sometimes. It kind of caught me off guard. Like she wasn't being totally honest about what's really going on. Um, but I'm like, really, the spiritual world is doing this? I guess. I was like, this this whole seance business looked very sci-fi to me. Like it should be on a sci-fi network or something. <laughs> like you're about to see some witches and ghouls and goblins coming out any second. I'm like, what in the hell is about to go on in this house? Um, but they need to figure it out though. Like, I, I don't know. They need to, you know, burn some sage around every corner of the house, get some holy water and just anoint the place. You know, you just put a little dab on your finger and you just go, you know, you just do some, just get, get rid of this. Do do whatever is necessary. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. Um Lord have mercy. Esme continues to try to manipulate. Like she just spun a whole tale. Because Esme knew she was caught. She was backed into a corner. I seen the look on her face. She looked scared and she looked cornered when Spencer was asking her questions about that letter and about who her biological father and stuff was. And she came up with a story, of course, because Esme, that's how you know a person like Esme is lying, because they have an answer for everything. They have a story for everything. It's like you cannot be that. You you know, you you answer everything. You you too quick with the answers like she doesn't stumble on nothing. She, it's like they're rehearsed answers. She's a quick thinker. Like she's very quick on her feet. I noticed that about her Um, and people like that. The mind that she has is a very dangerous mind. <laughs> It really is. Um, like she spun that tale like it was nothing. She put on the waterworks, the emotion, as she always does, all the theatrics. I'm so alone, Spencer. <laughs> I I have no one. I have no money. I 
Oh my God, when Maggie wouldn't tell me who my parents were, I cut her off. But I keep the letters for sentimental reasons. Shut the hell up, girl. <laughs> I'm so over her and her foolishness. And you can tell Spencer wasn't buying none of that bullshit she was spitting. He was not buying none of it. None of it. And then she's sitting here trying to unbutton his shirt and stuff. And he had to think quick because I was like, Spencer, do something because you got them pills in your, your pocket. <laughs> like, you don't need her doing that. Um, Yeah, trying to unbutton him and stuff. And he had to think of something very quickly to get out of that. Because remember, like, he's trying to avoid, you know, having sex with her. And she was like, oh, it's been so long. And, well, you better go out here and go get you a little toy or something. You know, buy you some batteries and get you a, a good little toy because it's going to be even longer. So <laughs> do what you got to do. Um, So he came up with some excuse like, oh, I got to go get you something or whatever. A little grand gesture. She talking about, oh, I like grand gestures. Um, So he looked at those pills. He's doing exactly what I said he was going to do. Because remember, he has a connection at the hospital. He needs to know what exactly those pills are. So, of course, he reached out to Britt to meet up with him or whatever he's gonna have her analyze those pills and if he could prove that those are the same pills that she gave that she slipped to um trina he can prove it, it's 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 more proof that will help trina in the long run get out of this mess you know what i'm saying so i'm like yeah hurry up spencer at least you being smart at least you're finally starting to wake up spencer because lord knows your ain't shit daddy is being dumb Nicholas is being as uh, as fool as humanly possible. Like this fool, when first of all, Nicholas had no business interfering in the conversation between Sonny and Laura. That was an A B conversation. He should have saw his punk ass out of it. That's what he should have did. He should have he should have saw his punk ass out of that conversation. I'm so over Nicholas at this point. Like just dumb. Um, and Nicholas, and I'm so disappointed because Nicholas used to be more savvy than this. Like, he really used to. I'm like, do you really want to sleep with this little girl that bad? Because <laughs> I call her a little girl because even though she, you know, legally she's an adult. But compared to Nicholas, she's a she's a girl. Like, come on, that ain't a woman. That's a, Ava's, that's a woman. You know what I'm saying? You got a woman at home. But you standing over here defending this, this kid. You know what I mean? Like, do you want her that bad? Like, defending her left and right. Like, his life depend on it or something. And remember, he told, um... He told Ava that, oh, he didn't really believe her. He wasn't buying into it. But yet you are buying into it based off this conversation with Sonny. Because if he was putting on a show, he would have did it when Esme was around. But the fact that you're doing it when Esme's not around tells me you really do believe her. Nicholas is a fool. Even Sonny told him that. He said, dude, you are delusional as hell. Um, He was like, you really are. He said, you're an idiot. He said, I'm sorry, Laura, but your son is an idiot. <laughs> he is. He's a fool. Um, because they were talking about the article or whatever that Smokes put out. And, you know, Nicholas came over to try to, you know, antagonize Sonny or whatever. And Sonny was like, listen, you know, trying to call him all type of bully and stuff because he came after Esme. He was like, all I did was talk, I talked to the girl. He said, because I'm not buying her BS like you are. So Sonny was trying to be the man, you know, the bigger man. He was going to walk away. Until Nicholas going to grab his shoulder talking about, don't walk away from me. You done lost your stupid ass mind. Like, Nicholas really think he big and bad. Like, you better go sit down somewhere. You must have forgot who you was grabbing. And Sonny promptly reminded him who the hell he was grabbing. Sonny grabbed his hand. And you could see Nicholas was in pain the way Sonny twisted his hand. Like, you could see he was in pain. He winced in pain. And he was like, don't you ever grab my arm. I said, I know that shit right, Sonny. Me and Sonny might not be on the same page right about now with this Nina mess, but I, I was here for Sonny doing that because Nicholas needed, he needed to learn a, a lesson. And even Martin, you know, Martin had to come up and break it up and stuff like that because Sonny was going to hurt that man. I ain't even going to call Nicholas a man. He a boy at this point. Sonny was going to hurt that boy. Um, He was going to hurt that, he was going to hurt that kid. <laughs> Sonny was not playing with Nicholas at all. Um, but yeah, Nicholas is a fool. Like, and he gonna sit here and ask Laura, oh, do you, oh, I, I don't believe Trina. I, I believe in Esme. Laura said, listen, I believe Trina innocent, but I will reserve judgment on Esme. I mean, I don't know why Nicholas don't see it. Like, are you like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> like Nicholas done lost his primetime rabbit ass cartoon mind. 
seriously. He done lost it. Um, but I did like the conversation between Laura and Martin, though. They were talking about Lucy and stuff. Martin is nasty. He was like, that girl is a panther. Like, he said some shit like that. Um, Laura was looking at him. She said, ah, that's too much. She said, that's too much information. I said, exactly. You don't want to know about your brother's sexual life? Like, no. Um, and I'm glad Laura said it because I've been saying it too. Like, when Martin told her about how valentine gave his blessing and stuff laura was like shit you're a grown man you ain't never need his blessing i said exactly my point exactly you never needed his blessing at all like y'all are grown if y'all gonna you know be dealing with each other that's y'all business what y'all do with each other is nobody business but y'all because y'all grown um but i love their relationship martin and laura i i love the bonding that they do i'm really here for it you know it's really dope so anyway um, I had a feeling Drew was going to help Carly get proof about, um, Nina possibly being Willow's mother as well, because he saw her slip that wine glass into her, uh, into her bag. And he was like, okay, what the hell are you up to now? She had to cop to it. She was like, yeah, I am up to something. Um, and you know, Drew sitting there talking about, well, if you, you know, want somebody to be like Jason or whatever, that's not going to be me or whatever. Like he was, like, I'm not going to placate you. My thing is. Jason, in my opinion, never really placated Carly. Like, he always had Carly back, but Jason was a real friend to her, though. He used to always tell Carly, like, the real. You know what I'm saying? I feel like any real friend would do that. Like, they're not just going to sit there and tell you what you want to hear. Jason always told Carly what she needed to hear. He used to tell her, give her advice, even if, even if she didn't agree with it. It was the real. It's what she needed to hear. And I think Drew, you know, the only way to be a real friend is just to tell her what she needed to hear. Um, but, of course, Drew was going to help her with her shenanigans because she needed to find proof that Willow was, you know, really Nina's daughter as well. I'm guessing that's what her plan is, to get definitive proof before she brings it to Willow, I guess. I guess that's what her plan is. I hope if she finds out the truth that she be the bigger person and tell Willow. Because, in my opinion, we all know Carly really ain't no better than Nina in a lot of ways. Because Carly has pulled her fair share of shenanigans over the years. But at least Carly, you know, she owns it. She does. A lot of times she own it. You know, she's still spiteful sometimes. But, you know, some, some things in Carly just ain't never going to change. I, I learned that a long time ago. But she has shown some growth. I will give her that. Um, in certain, certain areas, certain, certain days, you know. And then sometimes she'll revert back to her old self more times than than often more times than not but she'd go back to that um so yeah so they don't went into you know michael and willow's gatehouse or whatever because she needed to get some type of dna from willow and of course she i guess nabbed her toothbrush and as soon as they was trying to get out of there of course michael and willow pop up wondering what the hell they doing up in there so now they're gonna have to come up with some little story my thing is carly just tell the girl like just just tell her you know what I'm saying? Willow could have ran her own DNA test just to get proof and be sure. You ain't have to go do all of this foolishness. The last thing you want to do is give Nina more ammunition against you because this girl is already delusional as it is. And speaking of delusion, Nina, the delusions, the foolishness that was coming out of her mouth at that cemetery. Oh, my God. I be thinking to myself, do Nina really hear the shit that comes out of her mouth? She was talking straight foolishness when she was at Nell's gravesite. Talking about, oh, you had good in you. Nina, what? <laughs> Nina, what good did Nell have in her? That girl had the mark of Cain on her. She was the devil incarnate. What good did she have? All she did was walk around, manipulate everybody, blackmail people. That's all she did. What good did that girl ever do? And then she said they're old because they're trying to make it seem like you don't exist in Wiley's life or you never existed. I mean, shit, that would be my plan. <laughs> Why would anybody want to remember her? For what? She made everybody's life a living hell. That's all she did was scheme. Um, it, it, Like, Nina was talking straight foolish. You know, she's sitting there, oh, because you're my only daughter, I don't want you to be forgotten, I want Wiley to know who you are, and 
See, that's the problem with Nina. She doesn't realize that Wiley is a child. He's a toddler, basically. Like, that boy is only, what, three, four years old? He's too young to comprehend all of the stuff that she's trying to lay on him, that she's trying to tell him. Like, he's just a child. You know what I mean? Like, you can't tell him all this adult information so soon. He's a kid. And that's her problem, and she needs to realize that. Like, that's seriously one of the issues with Nina. She, I remember when she tried to tell Wiley that, oh, Willow's not your birth mother. She's not your real mother. Like, why would you tell a toddler that? And that's all she does is confuse the kid. I would hope that when Michael, you know, not Michael, but I would hope that when Wiley gets older, Michael would tell him about Nell, even though I'm sure deep down Michael don't really want to. But right now, it doesn't make sense to tell that boy that. For right now, because of his age, you know, he's too young to really comprehend all these things and to understand, fully understand what all this means. You know, wait till he's a little older, wait till he's maybe 10 years old or 12 or something like that, maybe 13. And then, you know, you know, just wait a couple more years, you know, wait a few more years. Let let him pro let him learn how to process things. Let him, you know, learn about stuff first. You know, you don't want to drop heavy stuff on a little kid. You know, even when Nina was asking Carly, oh, did anybody tell Wiley about Harmony yet? No. <laughs> like, what, what world do you live in? He's a child. You don't tell him all this heavy stuff right now. No, he's like, Nina just doesn't get it. Like, this is why she needs supervised visitation. And then she tried to sit there trying to be all nice to Willow and stuff. Talking about, oh, you have my sympathy because they went to go see uh, Jonah's grave site. Um, she's talking about, well, you have my sympathy. I know how it is to lose a child that you didn't really get to know, but yet you didn't really know Nell like that, but you knew enough about her to know that she was crazy. Nell was a psychopath, sociopath, even like the girl's nuts. And Nina knew this, but yet now that you found out that that's your daughter, you want to sit there and be like, oh, you were a good person. Shut up, Nina. No, she was not like what fairy tale world you live in. Like, she tried to blackmail Valentine, try to ruin your damn life when she couldn't get a raise at Crimson. And this is the good person you're talking about? Nina's batshit crazy herself. Um, <laughs> like, she's bugged. Um, and she's sitting there talking about, oh, I tried to compromise where Wiley was concerned. I loved how Willow snapped on her and said, when? I agree with Willow. When did you try to compromise with uh, Nina? In my opinion, Nina never tried to compromise with Willow. Nina never tried to compromise with Willow and Michael. And, you know, Willow told her to just back off a little bit and let her talk to Michael. And then they could figure something out. And Nina even admitted out of her own mouth. She was like, well, how could I have trust that? I couldn't trust that. I couldn't believe in that. OK, so that means you didn't really try to compromise then because you would not do what Willow asked you to do. You wouldn't give her time. You want it what you want it when you wanted it. And it don't work like that. That's the problem with Nina. She's delusional. Um, like compromise means you should have just went, talked to Michael and Willow and said, hey, can I just have like supervised visitation? Something of that manner. That's a compromise. At least you'll get to see him even if people are around, you know, watching y'all. At least you'll still get time with him. You know, I don't think they would have objected to that, but it's the way that Nina goes about everything. That's what makes her out to be the villain because she's sitting there talking about, oh, I, I, I don't want I'm not the enemy or whatever. That's the problem. And, and, you know, I'm glad Willow told her that she said you don't want to be the enemy, but you keep being. She said, then stop being the enemy. You keep doing things to make yourself the enemy. That's the issue, you know, and she needs to realize that. So, of course, Sonny pops up. Um asking what's going on and of course nina sitting there i don't want you involved in this you know you don't have to get involved oh i'm sorry that you and michael are fighting and nina be quiet um like sunny in my opinion basically chose nina today that's exactly what he did because michael wanted sunny to tell nina that she was wrong and sunny wouldn't do it sunny justified it by saying well you're my so yeah, Sonny, Sonny pretty much chose her because Sonny was like, listen, you are, he told Michael, like, you are my son. He was like, I don't take orders from you. 
I get where Sonny coming from on that. I get it. Because Michael basically was ordering him like to prove himself to him. He was like, you keep saying you got my back. Prove it. Put her in her place. Michael, I, I, he realizes more and more Sonny wants Nina. He's re- he's seeing it more and more. Um, and Sonny pretty much confirmed it today. He cemented that when he told her because Nina was like, oh, maybe we should keep our distance until, you know, the trial is over. And Sonny was like, all right, save me a dance. I said, see, that you want her. You know, ain't nothing wrong. Listen, if that's what Sonny want to do, that's what Sonny want to do. But he got to realize something, that your family don't support that decision. He got to respect their decision just like they have to respect his. It is what it is. You know, Sonny can't sit there and talk. And then he tried to tell Michael, oh, well, at least Nina apologized, unlike someone. Michael looked at him and said, I'm not apologizing to your ass because I didn't say anything wrong to you. He was like, I'm not apologizing. I can't blame Michael for that either. That's his prerogative. Neither one, you know, it, they're not willing to budge on things. So it is what it is. So, yeah, that was pretty much the entire episode. Um, it was a good one. I, I, For me, I enjoyed it. It was pretty fun. Um, hit the comment section. Let me know what you all thought. And I will see you all later. Have a great day. Peace.